Thank you. New details tonight in an accident that took the life of a Somerville teenager two days before Christmas last year and sparked a lawsuit against the South Carolina Department of Transportation. Our right team has been digging through records related to the accident in Colleton County that killed Trip Rabin. And for the first time tonight, we hear from his parents who believe it could have been prevented. News 2's Rebecca Collette gets a look at the ways the Ravens want to stop this from ever happening again. The death of their youngest and only son crippled the Raven family at first. I spent the first 45 days or so going through that wreck every night that I went to sleep over and over and over and over again. We were so paralyzed at first. We, we couldn't leave the house for a very long time. Now they want to make sure no other family experiences this loss. We had so much adrenaline built up from all of this, you know, that we just needed to do something. The Ravens already launched a petition to reform the DOT, making safety its top priority. The DOT does not get serious about protecting lives is very infuriating. Good evening. The governor says the commissioners ignored a list of priority road improvement They point projects. to the 23 million our I team told you about used for beautification projects instead of interstate improvements. Efforts to work with legislators has hit a roadblock. Many want to increase funding instead of focusing on reform. The Ravens hope their petition will change that. We would like for every person in the state to sign it. Uh, if you read the petition, it makes a lot of sense. We want the DOT to fix the things that are killing people. They're also working to bring a defensive driving class to local teens. It's called Brakes. It's a day behind the wheel training teens to handle the road, hazards, and emergencies like hydroplaning. The class is offered in February. And in the spring, they launch the Trip Alert app. It allows drivers to alert other drivers of hazards on the road. That could have been key to saving Tripp's life last year. Just minutes before he and three friends hit the water on SC-64, another driver called 911 to report the problem. It's just, I don't know, it's a big area of water just running across the road, and I think they need to put some signs up or something because uh -huh. somebody could die right there. I didn't know who to call, but I, I didn't, I'd have felt guilty if I'd have found out about somebody getting in an accident. Sheriff's deputies saw the problem. Problem too. Through our records request, news to obtain witness interviews from the South Carolina Highway Patrol. A driver who stopped to help the boys at the scene says deputies admitted to seeing the flooding on their way to work, but did nothing to alert other drivers. That money had looked straight down at Mr. Tripp. We were down there working on him, and I didn't even look up. It disgusted me so bad, I didn't even look up. And it's compelled his family to work in overdrive so it doesn't happen again. We know we'll be with him one day, and we're going to keep, we're going to just put one foot in front of the other until that day comes and make all the difference that we can while we're here. Um, we want that to, to have that legacy trip had of helping others. Trip died December 23rd last year, and the family says your calls, texts, Facebook posts, and letters have made a huge difference in their lives and in their healing process. I reached out to the DOT to see what, if any, changes have been made to how they respond to complaints and if anyone has been held accountable for not removing that illegal driveway sooner. They told me via email a suit has been filed connected to the incident and the SEDOT doesn't comment on cases involving litigation. Rebecca Collette, News 2. Rebecca, 